So if you don't tell me the true story, you're never gonna come back to America forever. I'm like, oh damn. This is not good. <laughs> on today's episode of the Grab Matters podcast, we welcome on a very special guest, Shota Tezuka. Shota is a professional wakeboarder from Japan. Uh, he's lived over here in Florida for quite a few years now. We talk with him about the difference between American wakeboard culture, Japanese wakeboard culture, what it's like growing up wakeboarding in Japan, um, and then eventually coming over here to ride. We also talk about his journey through different sponsors. He used to ride for Mastercraft and Ronix. Now he's on Super and O'Brien. He also spent quite a bit of time on Red Bull, so we kind of get into the, to the nuts and bolts of all that. We also talk about what gets him stoked on wakeboarding right now, who are some up-and-comers from Japan that we should keep our eye on. I want to say thank you to all the Patreon subscribers. Uh, your guys' support is what makes this podcast possible, so thank you a ton. Um, if you are interested in supporting the podcast, joining the Patreon is the best way to do that. You get to see who the guests are early, and then you can submit a question um, for me to ask on the podcast here. Without further ado, hope you enjoy this episode of the Grab Matters podcast. I approve water We're talking about wakeboarding. The thing about wakeboarding, every trick is an inverse. Backside. One side. Air railing. A new dimension. Yeah, you don't know who you don't know who that was though. Oh, come on, man! I have no, no idea. You don't know who it was? That's interesting. Why? I just figured you would know who it was by now. No, I, I don't know. Well, he didn't call you out, did he? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't really follow in that kind of everything, so I don't. I'm You're not big on Instagram. Yes and no. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I watch when they comment or when they post something. I guess come on the feed and yeah, you I don't, see it. You yeah, but I don't it. really follow up to it that yeah, much you know not engaging yeah, it or yeah. Anything. some of some of the thing that i look at it, it was very funny <laughs> it was like i loved it what do you think about the reverts what do you think about reverts reverts of what you know like when you land and then 180 cut out and then cut back in oh, oh, 180 ah oh. uh, like doing the contest and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean i don't care you don't care yeah okay but also when somebody says like oh they shouldn't flip over or they should cut it out the way it is naturally it's like yeah but it's, it's, it's part of it it's part of their style i think yeah that's true that's yeah, true yeah. it's their thing yeah i'm not the fan of it i like i like cutting kind of out turn and oh you like doing the 180 setup and then yeah yeah, yeah but yeah. sometimes you know like when we're in the rush like especially we're like a competing guys yeah, yeah, yeah that like we're like our mentality it's not the way that like the way it goes the trick like it's more of like flowing and then the way it's set up yeah 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 yeah. so it's like okay i landed a super rush or super quick or something that like not the perfect landing that i wanted to i have to turn but then i have to turn back to get, and then yeah, do yeah. it but i was like ah whatever at the end of the day it's trick is the trick so <laughs> that's true i yeah. feel like yeah because i feel like some people do that and then mm -hmm. like gunther yeah i feel like gunther does the thing where he's like very intentional and he'll like cut out get wrapped and yeah. like not doing any of the 180s it's like totally right different styles but also i mean i'm originally from japan so i'm uh, i guess smart guy so <laughs> oh <laughs> when, yeah when they when they give me extra points not to doing that i can do it you mean you, you'll put it in your run if it's being scored okay. I, exactly you know what i mean at that kind of stuff i don't i don't think it's it matters yeah yeah so whenever whenever feel comfortable yeah. or easier to do it's it works i think okay but when somebody argue with that i was like come on it's it's uh, it's not the big deal <laughs> you know what i mean like it's it's not the biggest deal that they yeah. can just do it whatever yeah I, it's all about what the judges say right if the judges are like yeah but judge can be yeah it's i don't know i can talk this forever do you think who do you think you're talking to right now from from a writer yeah, yeah yeah i think it doesn't matter okay just do whatever but if i were judge or expectators yeah if you were a judge if i were a judge yeah i would like to see more flow yeah nicely and naturally but i also get it too because if i'm if i'm a judge I also I was athletes. I was doing that thing in the contest, yeah, so I can yeah. probably understanding what they're what they're thinking. Yeah, yeah. I oh, mean, this is, this is gonna be good. I like one this. trick. One trick is gonna change everything in the contest. So, like that one eighty stuff. Whenever that all small stuff, mm -hmm. that have to be canceled out. So meaning you do the one eighty, but if you go do toe ten stomped, yeah, come over do a one eighty. Okay, yeah. do back mob five stomped. Right. It's like right, right. Screw that. Who cares about the one? Exactly. 
See, yeah. I don't know. I, like, I don't like the 180 that much. I like the flow. You like the flow? I love the flow. Well, I mean, yeah. Because, yeah. like, I compare it to, like, snowboarding. Right. Half that's pipe. what... No, no, no. That's what the people were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, you know, snowboarding, like, slope style or skateboarding. Yeah, they don't blah, do blah, that. Blah, blah, blah. They don't do that. But it's also wakeboarding, too. What do you mean by that? Like, if that's, if that's a cable, I think it's a different story. Yeah. Because of... Um, like they watching. I don't know about the. I, I don't know about the cable that much. But if there is there is the cable contest, is the judge including with the whole overall thing? It depends on the format, but okay. usually, like like some of them is a full lap, right? And they just score the whole lap, right? Some of them is just a section. See if that's a f- whole whole lap, yeah. Um, contest, then it matters. I think because I'm picking up a, because it's flow. I'm following what you're putting down is in the sense of on the boat. Right. You're not counting all that. You're it, just counting the trick. Exactly. On the yeah. That's what I'm saying. If the judge say, okay, we judging whole overall from the start buoy to the end buoy, turn around everything to yeah. everything incurred it, then follow matters. You know what I mean? Everything matters. Yeah. Even like, I don't know, shake the hands. Oh, like, slash the flick, wake. Dude. Flicking the hair. Yeah. Everything. Like it cares. But. I don't think they don't judge us that point because at the end of the day, okay, who grabbed what? Who didn't grab what? Yeah. You know, which way they spin it. You know what I mean? Both ways. Yeah, exactly. Like some people do like open spin, like uh, open open way spinning. Yeah. Backside spinning, blah, blah, blah. I get that point because it's a trick. Mm -hmm. But the 180 stuff, it's not a trick. You're right. That's true. It's a flavor. It's a flavor. It's a flavor. That's a very, <laughs> yeah. I like that. It's a flavor. Yeah, it's a flavor. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is going to be good. I'm okay. already fired up. We're, we're into this. So <laughs> okay. I usually start off with a couple of quick questions. Okay. Wake pants. Yes or no? Wake pants? Wake pants. Uh, like a long pants? Oh, yeah. Um, for me, I probably wouldn't do it. But for others? But for others? Yeah. So you're not like, if you see them, you're not I, like, I mean, Ooh. no. I mean, okay. It's like, for me, whenever they do, I enjoyed it. It's it all matters. So I I like it. Yeah. What they do. Yeah, yeah. I like the flavor that people has. Every everyone has the flavor. It's good. Yeah. Otherwise, it gets so boring. Agreed. To watch the people. Yeah. So, um, for me, no. But for them, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. easy. I like that. That's <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. To each their own. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Uh, favorite grab. Mm. Japan. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> for those who are, don't know, you are from Japan. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's kind there of a layup. Yeah. That's number one them. is Japan. Um, I mean, it's hard to say. Method, it's always good. Classic. Never get old. But um, yeah, I think my favorite grab is Japan, I think. Yeah. So I've got a question. We were talking about 180s to start the show. Right. Does the Japan have to be between the boots or can it be... On the boot or next to the boot? Uh, it's hard to say because I would like to. I, I don't like Zeech. Okay. I hate Zeech. I'm on board with that. Yeah. So everything with something, it shouldn't be Zeech. Yeah. But the way that all Asian culture, Japan, Korea, whatever, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not judging people. I don't judge people. But... There's no culture in there to be grabbing legitly. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than snowboarding, like a uh, snowboard or skateboarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only I'm talking about only wakeboarding scene. I don't feel like there's a culture because all the kids from Japan comes to my house and then they trying to like do the tricks, blah blah blah. I'm like, no, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> don't do that forever. <laughs> They're going tindy or something like that. <laughs> whatever, whatever grab they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's because a slab, slab grab. Or yeah, something. yeah, sl- yeah, yeah. Yeah, but slab grab. What, what is a slab grab like? It's just, I think it's gross, right? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Well, slab. Yeah, that's a grab. But so in Japan, I was good because I want to talk about mm. you know how you got into wakeboarding. But yeah. in Japan, yeah. you're saying the culture isn't like strict. I guess you could say on no, tricks and stuff. I, I mean, no, the strict. It's more about the point that nobody knows about the zich. Really? Like nobody knows. Which is, kind of, it's cool. not the part of strict or not. Like, because there's there's no there's, rule, no there's no thing. Yeah, there's no rules. So it's like, huh? 
So they're just confused. Like, no, you know what I mean? I don't like, get it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, so growing up, you're from Japan, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, run me through where you're from and then how you got into wakeboarding. Um, yeah, so I'm originally from Japan, and I've been living in America for probably, I don't know, maybe 11, 12 years for a uh, full season that I moved here. Um, <clears throat> and then um, how do I get into wakeboarding? Uh, so... Yeah. I get into wakeboarding because my dad was doing uh, wakeboarding with his friend um, in the ocean with the jet ski. That's kind of how I get, get into it. Okay. And then um, it's kind of a funny story because so the first time, I think I started wakeboarding when I was like eight. That was my first time ever. And then uh, so I am originally from, I don't know if you guys ever know, it's called the Mount Fuji, like the big mountain oh, yeah. in Japan. It's one of the most beautiful, beautiful places. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the most beautiful places. But so I grew up and born and raised uh, bottom Mount Fuji. And then um, I have lake like 15 minutes away from my house. But that also, there's uh, probably 20, 30 minutes away, there's an ocean down there. And then uh, that's my dad, how get into wakeboarding with his friend, like just a jet ski, yeah, yeah. messing around. It's like, what is wakeboarding? Yeah. And then, um, so I was watching him doing that. And then he was like, do you want to try it? I don't remember. I'm I don't I'm bad at memory. Little kid, I, right? Bad memory. Also that too. But <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I don't remember any anything. But uh, like specific that I was remember memory. It's that. So I think he put the his he put the handle in the left side of boots, inside of it, and then I was just holding the board, and it was like, kind of like you know jet ski with like dragging because i was like eight or maybe even smaller like seven six or something like yeah, that yeah. and then um i was like okay this is gonna be fun as soon as he let go the um jet the board went straight down into the water but he stopped he's, he didn't stop moving he was just keep going and i was in the water for like two probably three seconds could be even more i don't remember but i was just holding because i don't know what to do like i was in the water just dragging out whole time inside of the water and I was just holding it's like eh, and like oh, like the all the water comes in my eye nose everything and it was in the ocean yeah yeah, yeah. so Salty. it was hurt yeah like bad I was like I hate these sports like this I'm never gonna do this like I <laughs> this is the worst <laughs> so, so that's kind of how I kind of so that was the first experience experience with, yeah well, so then how does it progress from there meaning like when do you actually stand on it wakeboard um, boat all that stuff maybe i don't know probably about a year after that or so um kind of, so my dad was doing that with his friend in the jet ski but it was like i kind of wanted to step up the game like what is actual wakeboarding is like what is proper wakeboarding is then um so there's a lake that i i grew up it's called the lake yamanaka um so he moved to one of the he went to one of the wakeboarding school in the lake and then um he just started doing that in the lake and that that is the wakeboarding um proper wakeboarding shop it's kind of okay. kind of like o town you know like a glen like that people comes in and training teaching coaching blah 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 so um then i was probably started wakeboarding in that shop okay so yeah. that was first legit that was first legit wakeboarding how i get into it do you remember what boat they had there it was a proper wakeboard boat though no i think it was an outside engine really i think okay yeah. yeah it was very famous though in japan really has the outside boat engine because obviously you know yamaha blah 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 they're huge in japan yeah and all the yamaha and whatever the company makes outside engine tohatsu maybe i don't know no it's because uh ag yeah, I don't yeah know. it's the boat name ag okay yeah yeah so um but uh that's I, I don't remember which boat i started it maybe tiger old tiger or something yeah okay like, so, but cool. so are you <clears throat> you're getting dropped off there by your parents or how's that like working are you going every day or every week um, or yeah like i don't remember that much when i started it but um whatever the time that i knew that i was started wakeboarding it's probably i was doing almost every day okay after school yeah yeah so um i wasn't really enjoyed it when i was young when i was a little kid really yeah it's more of like a, a job that like i have to do because every time after school like 
my dad comes picking me up with his car and then went to the lake like 20 minutes away and I have to wakeboard every day. Other than I can have fun with the friends. So he was kind of pushing you into it oh, in totally, a sense of like... totally, yeah. Well, no, it was, I mean, time to time, you know, when I started wakeboarding, it's fun. But then in, before that, I was like, oh, I have to do that again today. <laughs> I can't, you know. Because yeah, everyone, all my, yeah, all my friends are talking about, oh, did you see that drama last week or... Are we gonna do the game, video games today? I was like, yeah, it'd be fun. We'll see if my dad is in the outside of the school today or not, and then he's in there always. So, which is it helps. Yeah, for at sure. The, at, at the end of the day. Yeah. And right now it is. I'm happy with it. But when I was young, it's like, eh, yeah. I don't know if I like this that much. So, <laughs> so when did you start competing? I guess because you at a certain point you probably start taking it seriously, right? Where you're. Um. Yeah. So. First ever contest that I competed it, I was probably that eight that year, probably eight. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, just local contest, and uh, uh, I believe I fell two times in a row. I think. Oh, okay. With toe side fashion air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did a touch the water, touch the water. That was my. That was part of it. That was a trick. That was the trick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Touch the water, shake the hand, front side fashion air, fall, mm. stand up, and fashion air. Fall. It's tough to go down on a fashion air twice. That's yeah, a tough one. Yeah, but I had a lot of fashion though, so when I was young, so. You look good though, right? Doing it, I'm <laughs> yeah. guessing. You're doing the fashion air. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I think my dad still has the video of it. Oh, I'd love to see that video. It's so funny, because I was so tiny. Yeah, I was a very tiny kid. Yeah. So I went up, fashion air, and you know, like the white bubble in the middle, that literally just gone. <laughs> it's just <laughs> pulled like, you Not even in. landing. Like, you can't even see a landing. You just fall off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, so, um, so you're doing so that some was, local contests. That was contest. my first. Yeah, that was my first ever um, contest that I competed in. And then, um, then I was like, man, like. It, it gets nervous. I was a very nerve kid when I was little, so um, I get nervous all the time, and I couldn't perform what I trained for. But then um, there's a couple of my age wakeboarding kid was there back in the day with different states of Japan, yeah, like different uh, place. And there's no there's none around me, but there's a couple in different states. So at the uh, I think it was like a national championship or something mm. that I see all the all my age kid they doing the flips and stuff. I was like, damn, that's cool. But also, I hate I hate losing. Okay. Yeah, yeah I hate I hate losing. So I'm I'm bad at it. So that's probably one of the things that I was like, I wanted to be good. And then back in the day, um, there's no like social media or anything like right now. So it was a videotape. Not even DVDs, I think. It was like just a yeah, video. VHS, yeah. yeah, it's just a videotape. So I watched all the wakeboarding videos and movies and all this stuff. I was like, damn, that's cool. So I was going to ask who, you know, what were some movies that you watched or writers that you looked up to? Oh, like, man, I watched like millions, millions. I don't remember which one. Like, it's just too many. Yeah. I couldn't put the name on it. But I think one of my all time favorite movie was probably the push process yeah that was a very very good one yeah, yeah that was one of your favorites yeah i think that was yeah i mean there's a lot of good one but i think that's just like the thing that that's the pop, one pop up yeah any any writers specifically that you remember back in the day you're kind of looking up to i mean obviously like keith lyman and you know go big and styles blah 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 but also i was i was shocking watching the rathy's part of the push process at the very first i was like man this guy's stylish very like yeah stylish yeah so i was kind of yeah i remember like i was kind of shocking for that well yeah and when movies came out back then i feel like it was a it was a really big deal to like put it in watch yeah. it be like oh yeah but also pros. i think like i i think every, everything was like i think the oakley team back in the day that movie was really talent people down there too yeah and I don't know. It just looks so gorgeous. Like everyone's really talented, and the the music that they use, and whatever the film wise and trick wise, blah, blah, everything was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it was perfect. 
So <clears throat> speaking of, I mean, some American or North American riders, when was your first time coming to America? So my first time ever coming to America was, I was 10. And um, that was probably my third or fourth year of weight, doing the wakeboarding. And uh, this is actually very good story. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna. It, this is very good. I don't. I don't think I haven't told a lot of people about this story, but um, so um, see, like even I'm trying to talk about this, like still like goosebump me the whole time. So, um, when I was ten, um, my dad was just uh, how to say it. He was just uh, uh, like uh, no more employees. Like not like he owns the company or he doing. He, his business himself or something yeah. like he's just normal normal co-worker and then um i had i think by the time i had just my sister that time and then um so it was like four four or five family of mine and then um so it wasn't like i wasn't rich family's kid sure sure yeah. by the time and then um i think back in the day if you win the national um, in your category, you get a ticket to be able to go into the world. That's what uh, like they pay for it. That no, 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 just to like opportunity, opportunity. Gotcha. Yeah, the association give you is like, hey, do you want it to go to the world? Yeah, yeah. I, you have to win the your category, otherwise, I mean, I'm pretty sure you could go it, but I think like the organization, like just the whole like association, whole teams, like Japan teams with it. Yeah, you have to get a ticket with it. You have to win the your category. Gotcha. The year before, and then I think I won the junior junior boys division when I was um, like nine. Okay. And then the the tenth year that I be able to have, I got the ticket for going in the world. But my dad was like, hmm, I really want him to go, but I don't think we don't have mu- like enough money to bring him to go to the worlds. So. After that, all the whenever the uh, the wakeboarding shop that I grew up, the all the people was like, "Hey, you should bring Shota to go on the worlds. It's gonna be a good opportunity to be." And um, like literally everyone was saying that to my dad. But then my dad was like, "I don't know if I can do it. Like it's it's expensive. It, it's expensive. Yeah. yeah, and we can't speak English too. Like it's gonna be very hard mission to do all the stuff." And then I think. The guy owns that wakeboarding shop, and also there's like a couple people that works for that shop. They all trying to do a foundation of my world's trip, like to pay for it. To pay for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, I think it was I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think it was like 60, 70 people pay for whatever. It's like I don't know. 10 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, blah, blah, blah. That's awesome. And at the end of the day, I think it was over 10 grand that pot went up. It that Back in the day, that was like not even like a, a cloud funding or anything. Like it was just just a local. Word of th- mouth, people. Exactly. Yeah. And then that's how became I first time ever went to America. That was 10 with my dad. 10 years old with 10 grand and you're ready yeah. to go. Yeah. But I have no idea about the money or anything. Like I, I literally don't even know the whole story yeah i just know that all the all my friends or whoever that trying to help me just put the money in the pot and then i i came out to america that's so awesome yeah, i didn't know that story yeah at all. It's, it was it was one of the i mean i'm i'm still thinking about that a lot too yeah that's that's one of the reasons that i'm i'm here now and if that without it like i don't know I'm, who I'm, knows yeah, yeah exactly i won't probably not even do wakeboarding maybe now true yeah, yeah it might have just moved on and exactly yeah. so how'd that go first time in america do you remember uh, much of that trip or? yeah i fell twice fashion air no 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 <laughs> no i don't remember i think it was no front side toe side wake to wake twice Ooh. yep and you could probably flip at this point right? yeah, yeah i can flip so it. that's tough yeah and <laughs> so it was funny because so i um, I fell first trick, and that was O Dub. The world's was at the O Dub, which is in Florida. Yeah. And first time, that was my first time ever America. First time WWA contest. 
And then back in the day, I was already watching all the, you know, uh, videotapes and the movies and all this stuff. So I was like, I walk into that, you know, whenever the, the road in, at the Odab in, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in the back, and I watch like, oh my God, Parks Barnafe. Oh my God, Donnie Harf. Oh my God, Sean Watson. Shane Barnafe. Like literally everyone. That's like, this is freaking cool. You know, like that was my first ever memory that I came to the contest. Yeah. And I was like, I remember but i was very shy kid back in the day so i couldn't even i obviously i couldn't even oh well, yeah you're super English young either. too i was like ah like super cool like just from outside it's like hey. yeah but um yeah and i was like very nervous that contest and i failed the first trick and i, I remember my dad was saying it's like do it again from the shore because you can kind of talk to him or talk to me from the shore it's like I wasn't really, I wasn't very uh, comfortable to do it again, but yeah. my dad told me to do it. So I fell twice and I was so bummed. But I was like, wow, like it's more of, I mean, it's more of like experience that I was very happy with it. Interesting. Then I was very bummed about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I think like that was one of my start from wakeboarding journey, I think. So you're more so grateful to have had the opportunity than yeah, like pissed every, that you uh, yeah because yeah. everything was everything was such a shocking thing for me every single moment and fell twice and I was like damn it's bummer but damn like this is such a cool thing like watching all movies here like those legends for me it's that literally like I'm watching like uh, I go to uh, Oscar. And watching all those, you know, famous people, yeah, yeah, yeah. whenever the actors, movie stars, for me. So I was like, man, like I wanted to be come on with America, and I wanted to start competing here. Yeah, because of that. And that was the start. The that beginning. was the start of it. Yeah. So after that, do you go back to Japan then? For yeah, so I went back to Japan after that, and I turned pro. I turned a pro when I was twelve in Japan, and that was. Yeah, that was the youngest um, record age that turned a pro in Japan back in the day. Yeah. And after that, I would turn a pro and then at the 12. And then after that, it's been it's been over 10 years that I haven't been break that record. There's a couple of kids turned a pro 12, but Not it's, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same age as what I turned to pro to. Are you talking all sports? No, no, just, just a wakeboard. Just wakeboarding. Yeah, just okay, a wakeboard. okay. yeah, yeah, just gotcha. a wakeboarding. But, um, yeah, so I turned a pro when I was 12 in Japan, and then um, I started competing in the pro. And I think I I won the pro tour, I forget, maybe 15, 16? In America? There. No, in Japan. Oh, in Japan, okay. Yeah, Japanese pro tour. Yeah, yeah. They have all the pro tours and stuff too. Oh, so. I didn't know that. Yeah, I turned a pro. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I won, the, I won the pro tour when I was 16. And then 17th year, I came to America. For That's when you moved. That's when I moved here. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to I wanna hear about that. I want to run through, like, so you moved at 17. Yep. Where did you live when you came here? So, first time I came in America, um, I came with the two friends from Japan that they were wakeboarding. And then, um, I mean, obviously, we don't speak English. We don't know anyone about it. So, you know zero English, basically? Well, also, but... Before that, into that story. So, I um, after that first time ever competing in America, I uh, I came to America for training. Okay. Yeah. So I went to um, Adam Fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wakeboarding school. Yeah. And uh, Sean O'Brien used to do uh, Wake, Orlando Wake, something. Something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like we'll land awake something uh, with Derek. And um, yeah, so I go to those guys wakeboarding training, uh, coaching thing for uh, like a first year, probably I was like, um, I was like 12 or okay. something. Yeah, the, ter uh, the year that I turned a pro, um, I came here and training for probably like, first time I was like probably like a, two weeks maybe three weeks okay not that long but not that long at all yeah but during the winter season then every year after that i came to like a month two mm. month three month just keep longer yeah, longer yeah. longer every year and then 17th i turned uh, i came here i moved here actually to compete whole year 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, before that, I wasn't really competing. I just came here and training. Just training. So at this time, when you're 17, yep. what kind of sponsors do you have? I mean, you got some sponsors. Oh, 17? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, um, yeah, I, I think... I think I had, man, I don't remember, but probably I had like 10 sponsors or something. I had a lot of sponsors. That's a full board of stickers. <laughs> For <dude>. real. So <laughs> I remember I remember when I came here to America first time, like uh, when I was junior, like competing, competing. Back in the day though, putting the sticker on the board was one of the coolest things. So cool. Like, I never super did it, but cool. so cool. Yeah, exactly. Like more sticker is more cooler. <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah, dude. No, for real. I'm serious, yeah. Yeah, like graphic, come on. If you can see the graphic, you're amateur. You're not even that level. <laughs> That's what it was back in the day. So um, I remember when I was 17, I came here the first time. I was putting so much sticker. So even, you the compa- even the company wasn't paid either. Just throw it on. Probably 10, well, probably five, six out of 10 was probably paying for me. Okay. Which is, there's there's some legit sponsors too, but also there's a couple of the company or whatever the friend's shop that I was putting this uh, sure. sticker on the board too. Yeah. Yeah, so here and there. But I remember at the start pit or the start dog, there's so many of my friends was like, oh man, you have a lot of sponsors. It's intimidating. Yeah, like yeah. you make so much money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I was like, really? So 17 years old, yeah. living in Orlando. Who, who are you living with and who are you riding with? So point? first three months, because I didn't have the visa at that time. Mm. Yeah, so I was like, okay, 17th year. I was like, okay, I don't even know what's my level is in the world. So I came here the first time when I was 17, and that was kind of my challenging year. I was like, we'll see what my level is. And then the first ever contest that I competed in the junior pro that was in Ackworth, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was a pro tour. And then luckily I won the contest somehow. And I was like, damn. You got a lot of stickers it, on your board. You better be cool. winning some contests well, with all those stickers. Yeah, but it's more of like challenging for me. Like, you know, it's just like, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, wasn't, I wasn't totally not thinking that I'd be able to win either. So I was like. Really? Yeah, yeah. I know Daniel Powers. In a long time, because I think my first ever come that worlds, I think Daniel was my heat too. Probably, yeah. yeah. I was like, "Damn, Daniel Powers. His name is Powers. Last name. That's such a strong name. I'm so scared." Oh, it is. Yeah. Like, his name is so like powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> so after probably um, five years or so after that first time ever, Daniel was so top in the junior pro man. That I first time ever competed to, and obviously he was fan favorite all the time, and um, so I was like I wasn't sure that I'd be able to take in the win that yeah. contest, and then some somehow I took win on that contest, and I was like, damn, this is super awesome, and we'll see what the rest of the year goes. Start off just, strong, yeah, and I just keep competing. I will, I, I not like. So second stop, third stop, I didn't able to win for the contest, but I think I was in the final or the podium. So I had a good standing for um, first couple of tournaments. And then at that time, I only be able to here for three months because I was just a tourist visa. So I went home and all my, all my people around me, they're all celebrated already. Oh, my first ever contest winning in yeah. America. I was like, yeah, this is awesome, blah, blah, blah. We did like whole massive party back in Japan. That's sick. Yeah, that was awesome. And then um, after that, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to go back or not because I have to, I don't even know if I'm be able to go back yeah. without the visa. So I came back um, after two weeks, three weeks, went back to Japan for one time and came back. And I remember, I don't know if we can use this, but- Oh, we can totally use yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I remember that time um, I came without the visa and then the security guy stopped me because I was 17, yeah, like such a little kid. And I doesn't look like 17, I was like, look like 12. Super tiny kid. And then I came back two weeks after and it's like, hey, what are you doing here in America? And I was like, uh, I'm gonna go to the Disney. And it was like, 
Oh yeah, yeah, Disney. Okay, what? You were here three month, two weeks ago though. You didn't went on Disney. I was like, yeah, I went on Disney too, but I also wanted to go to Universal too. I was so scary to say that I've go there for wakeboarding. Yeah, for like yeah, work or something. Blah 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 blah. And then by the time I was so such a young kid too, so I was like. Yeah, yeah, whole Universal, Disney, Sea World, NASA, all the, like I was trying to say as much as possible. It's like, okay, kid, you go that that room, and I had to go to the back room, and then uh, the guy was like, okay, so if you don't tell me the true story, you're never gonna come back to America forever. I'm like, oh damn, this is not good. <laughs> so I, I explain everything about it. I do wakeboarding, blah blah blah, and then. Luckily that year I was in the junior pro men. So back in the day, the junior pro men doesn't have uh, any prize money for anything. So huh. I didn't came America for work. I mean, it is it is what. But you're it not is. getting money for it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't came for work. But also, yeah, I didn't get the money. So I was like, the guy was like, okay, next year you need a visa if you're gonna compete in pro. But I think also that time I was trying to get the visa as well. So you were working together. Yeah, I was working on it, but yeah. I was kind of scared to say everything about it. But because of also, I think the standing I was had it. It was such a good standing spot that I'd be able to take in the whole overall winning too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, damn, don't miss, don't mess it up. <laughs> yeah, it's just such a kid, kid's mind, you know. But um. And you were alone this whole time. Yeah, I was alone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. So. I got a couple of questions. One is, so you you were going to America a couple of times. Yep. What was su- surprising to you about American culture versus Japanese culture when you were first experiencing it? Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> everything. Like, literally everything, like, head to toe. Totally different world. <laughs> totally different. Yeah, different world. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's just too many. A lot of people say fast food. Out of, people out of America say fast food. That's like a big one, like but, McDonald's and stuff. But what do you mean? Like it's like the the amount There's of fast of, food places. Oh, uh, like I a see, lot I of see. them. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't know. There's a lot been. of Japanese. There's a lot of fast food in Japan. Too. Is there? Yeah, I don't really eat that much, but there is a lot down there yeah. too. So, um, other people say guns. Guns is a big one. Yeah, guns a big one too. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, when you go to the grocery, and people open up and eat before they pay. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Because they'll pay, no matter what. True. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. if they're thirsty, they just open up the bottle and drink the water, and then pay after. I'm like. Not allowed in Japan. I don't think so. <laughs> That's not yours yet. You haven't bought it yet. That's true. It's not. You haven't paid for it. <laughs> yeah. But you're gonna pay for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. I know. I know. I think that was one of the. That's funniest. interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think I, that was one of the funniest thing too. Yeah. Yeah. That I is like, funny. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I got an early Patreon question from Ryan Shimabukuru. Okay. Uh, so if you guys are interested in joining the Patreon, that's the best way to support the podcast. Uh, it allows you to see who the guests are early, and you can submit a question for them. So thank Ooh. you to all the Patreon subscribers. Thank you. Uh, so we got this question from Ryan, um, and I think this is an interesting one. So he's saying. Japan has a lot of talented and stylish riders. Why haven't more of them made the move to Florida full time? So that's, that's part of my question. It's like, You're wondering the same thing. Why don't they? <clears throat> but also, um, so last year, I don't know. I think um, whoever in the wakeboarding scene, um, if they follow up a little bit, I think they've seen before. So I was doing the, this one big project with my sponsors last year, uh, with my insurance sponsors, because um, Hoken no Zenbu. Um, so the the guy owns the company. Um, at the end of the year, I usually go back to end the year and then you know talk to all my sponsors back home, back home. And then the guy, I went to dinner with them, and it was like, okay, so it's been almost ten years that you being in America and competing, and there's a lot of good riders in Japan, but no no one. It's not going in America and started competing to all that stuff. Like follow up to you. Yeah. Like why is that? I want to see the kids competing. Like Japanese guys just destroying in the uh, scene. Yeah. Yeah. Cause snowboarding, skateboarding, 
they're in, they're crushing in, they're it, nuts dude. right now, like yeah. insane. Japan is the country to beat, like for in real, snowboarding a lot for and real. skating too, yeah, and the skating as well, yeah. especially the girls skating. Skateboarding. Girls are so good, yeah, insane. So he was like, "Why is that?" And I'm like, "I don't know," hmm. but also. I told all the Japanese kids, like young kids, I think like the, the movements and how hungry they are, it's just such a low. Interesting. Yeah. Like they're talking about it all the time. It's like, oh, I wanted to be world number one. I wanted to be Shota. I wanted to be, you know, getting sponsored by boat company, board company, getting professional board, blah, blah, blah. But they never do anything with it. Like they train in Japan and then compete in Japan. They're winning in Japan. But what else do they do? Yeah. Like when I was 17, it's not compared to me, but also when I was 17, I couldn't speak English. My parents doesn't have that much money, but also like, why not? Like, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So I came here and started competing. So, so you're wondering the same thing. Where are the, uh, where exactly. Are the it's like, writers? why don't you, why don't you guys do it? Yeah. And they're all talking about, you know, like a lot of excuse, I think it's like, oh, no money, no, no time, no English, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, but nobody speak language when they're born that's yeah, very that like, is very on, true like do something with it yeah. yeah like i learned english a lot i never studied english in my life before. i was gonna ask if you studied it in school yeah i never that. studied english before but um i moved here and i need english to leave yeah yeah so i mean you can i mean people can do it if they wanted to yeah yeah either eat good way or the bad way if it by the way, it's like one of the experience of life, I think. Yeah, you got to so try it, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's what I think too. So, um, but anyway, so my sponsor is saying like, okay, let's just do project, like big project. So we did uh, auditions last year uh, with, it's called the Wake and Dream project. And then the sponsors pay for the all um, expenses to travel, leave, uh, practice and literally everything. Yeah. So we get to choose two kid to bring her over to America for full season. Whole season. Whole season. That's yeah. sick. Yeah. It was. It was probably like around. <clears throat> yeah. It was like over hundred grand project. It was. It was a huge project. Yeah. And I, I have to take care of them. <laughs> they live with you. Yeah. They live <laughs> okay. with me. Yeah. For whole season <laughs> last year. But anyway, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Yeah, so those two kids would stay. I mean, they're like 20, 21, 22 maybe. Yeah. Kids, yes and no. But yeah, yeah. They uh, they were here last year, whole season, and they competed in the whole season. I, I brought them to the old tours and all the stuff. And then um, I think for them, had a really good experience. With yeah, I was going to say, how'd it go? Because it, it's pretty um, cool. So obviously, it's their first year um, competing here. So it was um, not the, not the, what they wanted it but also we weren't we like we weren't really expected to they're gonna win the contest either yeah so it's more of like for them experience like to competing what the contest scene right like in america or how they need to practice or everything so yeah get used to it first year exactly, exactly. get used to it okay yeah so yeah that's i mean that's an interesting question yeah. i think that was, I, I would i would love to see that more was Japanese. yeah that was very very cool um project that we did and, you gonna do it um, again run it back another time get some it's, more it's Japanese up to him <laughs> it's up to him <laughs> yeah true yeah true. but um the girl um yeah name, who, who were they the girl named he uh hina hinata it's one of them and then uh you is the, the 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 guy side but hinata just came back like a month ago in here and she's gonna go, try to compete again this year sick so yeah exciting for that Going well. Well. okay that's that's sweet yeah all right, I think it's time we move into the LF and Wheel of Questions presented okay. by Liquid Force. The LF and Wheel of Questions. Okay, let's go. So yeah. go ahead and grab that down if you can snag that. Snag that and, down. Yeah, pull it down here. Okay. I don't think it's it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, and just set it right here. Okay. So we got. I just put it in the middle. Yeah, just put it in the middle. So we got okay. some Japanese trivia on here. We got some wakeboard trivia. Um, yeah, oh, go ahead. I don't and know if I can speak English, uh, if I can read English, though. I'll read it to you when it lands. <laughs> I can the, speak and, you know. <laughs> well, the read it, yeah, yeah my yeah, handwriting's are you ready? shit, too. Yeah, give it a spin. How hard do I have? A hard. Give it a hard okay. spin. Yeah, hold it on the. There you go. Oh, <laughs> love it. Wakeboard trivia. Ooh. 
Okay. What does that mean? So it means I'm going to ask you a question about wakeboarding, like okay. wakeboarding's history. Ah, uh, oof. And you've got to answer it. <clears throat> okay. So, who invented the whirly bird? Oh, I know this. Shane? No. Oh, that's dum dum. Yeah, that's dum dum and Tatia. So where are the parks? Parks didn't. I don't know. Parks didn't invent it. No. No. You, this one's kind of a sneaky one. Ah. Bill McCaffrey. What? Yeah. No way. Uh, he, he probably did one and never did it again. I assume. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what it done? It, it works. Hey, you got it's it. It still, it still works. <laughs> yeah, that's like no a, way. People don't expect that one. Yeah. Okay, so that's not my fault. That's someone Japanese old guys tell me. The story, whole story. I remember that. Do you know where the whirly bird come from? Like the name of it too? No. No? Do you? I mean, it looks like you're doing a... Exactly. So I, what I've heard, that's why I say Shane of Parks. I think, I think it was Parks. So back in the day, don't the Parks do a lot of whirly bird back in the day? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He did whirly seven. I think the yeah, only exactly. one to do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. So um, I think some old guy wakeboarding in japan this is when i was like seven eight around there so did you know that worthy bard parks bonafide did the first one and then he really like yakitori you know like the yakitori it's like a chicken uh it's called the stick like it's like uh chicken in the stick that one of the japanese food, no it's called the yakitori so it's like chicken stick yeah yeah, yeah. that chicken stick you it, the way it cooks it's that you roll with the stick with it. Yeah, you spin it. Yeah, you spin it. Yeah. That looked like uh, like a bird. That's what, I don't know. I mean, it could be. Yeah. We'd have to talk to Bill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, him. first of all, it's not the parks. It's Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, oh, that's that, it's all just a bullshit story. But that's that's not my fault. It's that no, one. Right? And that is, a, I will give it to you. That one's yeah, a yeah. sneaky, tough one. Some okay, people, okay. you know, that would be wow. a tough one. Hey, this, is kind, this is very tricky. How about we do Japanese trivia then? Because you were talking Mount Fuji earlier. Okay. And the Japanese trivia on here was, how tall is Mount Fuji? Ooh. Within uh, a couple of meters, 100 meters. 3,000? Man, I'm supposed to know this. You're, I mean, you're going in the right direction. Exactly. 3,000. 700 meters. Yeah. 3,776. So, yeah. You got yeah. It. Yeah. That was impressive. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no way. That's pretty good. For the Americans, that's 12,389 feet, if you didn't know. So, that's up there. I mean, it's a it's a big mountain. Yeah. I was looking at pictures of it and stuff. And it looks yeah, because I remember. So, the lake that I grew up, it's called the Lake Yamanaka, which is bottom of Mount Fuji as well. That's already 1,000 meter. Oh, at the? From the ocean. Like, the level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we get so tired just riding. Oh, a thousand meters. So, so 3,000 feet or 3,300 feet. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty high. Yeah. Very high. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, we could go ahead and put that back. Thank you to Liquid Force for the LF and Wheel of Questions. That's fun. Yeah. A little whirly bird that, you know, whirly came bird. out of nowhere. Yeah. So we're I'll talking. Text, I'll text Bill after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Confirm. Be like, did you actually do this? I haven't seen any videos. <laughs> um, so we're talking English. Okay. Were you ever in a commercial in Japan for learning English? Yeah. You were. How'd that happen? How did you know about that? I got, if you think that one's obscure, I've got some other ones I'm going to pull out. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so what was that like? I mean, what was the, what was the deal? Uh, so it's, uh, that was just one of my, uh, one of my agency um, got the sponsor deal. And it's like a English CD. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, a, it's called the Speed of Learning. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what the product name was. And then it's, it's like a podcast. Like people listen to this CD whole times. Like, hey John, how are you, Mary? How's your day going? That kind of stuff. <laughs> whole thing, you know. One to probably I don't know, like 60, 60 episode or something. Wow. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's like monthly thing, like month to month. Yeah. So were you just speaking into a microphone English? Is that what it no, was? No, 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 no. Uh, you just listen. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And what was your, you were on a commercial for it, like to promote it? No, yes. So I was like, so they, the the crew came to America and all blah, blah, blah. as like films me kind of like speaking English. Yeah. And this athlete, he learned English from what, learning, listening this CD. Yeah. Here it goes. 
It's pretty sick. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the money was probably pretty good. I'm yeah, guessing yeah, if your agent yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, yeah okay, let's yeah, do it. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, so let's talk. Where's that uh, that cover from the mag? You got that? Oh, this one? Yeah, let's, I want to talk about that because this is. I think this is one of the sickest covers. It's for wakeboarding, yeah. Like the wakeboarding isn't maybe the focus of this. Yeah. But it's a cool, you know, it's a cool picture. So kind of run through what that structure is and I'll put this in the podcast. Yeah, too, so, so. Um, I've got, I think I've got two covers with the wake mag and uh, could be more, but the the one of the Japan main cover was, uh, so I took this photo with the Chris Garrison and uh, also the other one as well. That The other one was Mount Fuji yeah. one. And then um, first of all, Chris just really loves Japan. Yeah, so he's he's been there a couple times without me too, randomly. And that year too, it's like, um, Chris was like, hey, you wanna go back to Japan and take some photos and maybe get some magazine cover? I was like, yeah, sure. That's, that'd be cool. Yeah. And um, back in the day that um, I was with the Red Bull Japan too for a long time. So um, I think we've got a lot of different uh, cool spot that I was searching for it for like, you know, uh, athlete project, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then um, this was such a tough cover to take it because we didn't have that much time time clock to take this photo. So I think it only took like hour and a half or something in the early, early morning. Okay. Yeah. To get that, get it done. But um, yeah, it was. So what is that structure? What is that? It's just a, um, I don't know. You don't know? Just, it's, the name just, of it, I forget the name of it. I wrote it down cool. in there, but it was, it said it was like one of the only two in yeah, yeah, it's, it's on page it's, eight. It's, yeah. it's, it's all, it's, it's one of the only two, I think. This like the the shrine thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to, I want, I really wanted to take this exactly photo, and through, there's through it, yeah, through it, yeah, exactly. Or like I'm in the middle. Yeah. And then, or somehow I wanted to put the shrine in the in the photo, and times like with the wakeboarding. Yeah. Because there's a lot of temples and shrine um, in Japan. Shrine, shrine, shrine. Shrine. Yeah, shrine. you're right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's two shrine in the water. Yeah. This is one of them. And the other one was in the ocean. This was on the lake. And the other one, it's more popular. And then, and I think you can get in, like get closer, but there's also current too. So it goes up and down yeah. a lot. And this was on the lake, but also there's a lot of, uh, I think, fisher guys gotcha. in the early morning. And this is, it's called the Lake Biwa. It's one of the biggest lake in Japan. It's 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 huge. It's like a Lake Washington in America. Okay, it's yeah. huge. So it gets very bumpy. Like it's almost like you can't even drive. You know, it's like crazy, like ocean, like uh, waves down yeah, yeah. there. So I have to be super early in the morning. And yeah, it was. That's a sick photo. It That's was one of the coolest covers. Yeah. I think it's one of my favorite wakeboarding photo too. Yeah, that we took. Love it. I want to talk some sponsors. Come back. So earlier in your career, or earlier in your career, you were on. <laughs> Mastercraft and Ronix. Yep. Two big brands, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then now you're on Super and O'Brien. Mm -hmm. So two totally different brands. Yep. So I'm curious, the, like the switches from Mastercraft to Supra and Ronix to O'Brien and how mm -hmm. both of those kind of happened, I guess. So you can start with the boat company if you want first. And um, so for me, the sponsor, it's, I mean, obviously um, the, the money contract, it's definitely important. But for me, it's probably what is my uh, priority of the company that I'm, you know, um, expecting for the company. Um, I mean, money, yes, there is important, but it's not all about the money because I mean, you can make money in a million different way. More than that, so like, which is the best boat company or which best boat or the best board to ride with? It's like, what is to take me the best performance to it? So. Um, anything, it's not just a board company or the board company. I think everything for me to choose or talk to the company, it's that what is my important for um, to doing what, am I, what I want to do. So that's kind of how I switch the company, I think. Especially, okay. especially probably the, the timing that I changed, it was one of my big kind of year or two to switch all my 
company around in that year. Meaning you had a really good season? Or, yeah, yeah, really had a good season or whenever, I, I forget which season was because I'm very bad yeah, at memory. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, whenever the timing, I think that, I think for me it's very important for my life is that t- timing. And I think that t- the big timing that I switched those two company, especially, was the same time that it's my next second second pass, you know, second page of my wakeboarding yeah. career. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. So, I guess, what were some of the reasons why you switched, I guess, is what I'm asking. Because um, it doesn't happen too often, right? Where, I right. mean, it does happen, but not right. all that often. Right, 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 right. So, I mean, <laughs> here and there, it's, it's, it's hard to explain everything about it because it was in the contract and everything as well. Sure. But um, I think if I... If I make decision that I'm like, okay, there's no, there's no excitement for me to be in with this team or the company, or whatever, and then I might have an opportunity to switch. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's probably the same as any other sports athletes as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like whole baseball team or whatever. Same as skateboarding, all this stuff too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah and that's a, uh, yeah. yeah. It's just with. I, I really loved it. it um, um, I really loved it at a team and a company, but it just, I think it's just timing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially if you're with a brand for a really long time, it's like, well, if you change, it's a whole new energy, yeah. whole different team, yeah. different products. It can yeah. be exciting. Exactly. I guess. So, yeah. Um, mm. let's talk Red Bull. Okay. So you said you were with Red Bull for what, like 10 years or something? Yeah, maybe 11 years. 10, 11 yeah, years. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. So yeah. Red Bull's a big sponsor in action sports. Yep. Um, I'm curious what it's like when, you know, those relationships kind of come to an end because 10, 11 years is a long time. Yeah. And I feel like Red Bull's a big company too. So like, right, what's right, that, right. what's that like when it kind of trickles um, out, fades out? So get into it was, it was very tough to get into the team, obviously. And I think by the time that I signed with the Red Bull Japan was, uh, I think I was the third one, maybe first one uh second or third guy that had the contract with the rebel japan team that was very new to be yeah. rebel japan became and then um Reb, I, um i think like so i by, by that time i was with the oakley for a long time too and then uh my uh use uh ex uh, oakley manager he was very good friend with the relationship with the rebel guys and then he was trying to push me to get into the rebel team as well but i think because the Red Bull is a huge company, they need to prove to uh, headquarter to say, yeah, he can or she can be the Red Bull athlete. Yeah. Yeah. It's only, I think it was only like 960 people or something in the world's Red Bull athletes. Yeah, not, not too many. So um, it's very, very, very rare. And especially, I think by the time, I think Japan Red Bull was really strict about who to get into it. Because that was beginning of the well, it's just starting, yeah. yeah, with the start. So I think for them it's very important. And I think I was talking with them for like almost full year and a half, two years to trying to get into it, but they never really say go to it. And then that seventeenth year that I came here the first time, like that was that was my American dream that year. That was my first ever turning point of my wakeboarding careers too. Um, I won that year for junior pro overall and i won the i think i won the national and the worlds too like and the rookie year i think a rookie of the year i think i took the every single title i'd be able to get that year yeah. and i think i had a three energy drink company sponsors offer and seven eight board company i mean there's and not even that many board companies left yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> I mean, 100%. 100%. So everybody is interested. And and the boat company too. Uh, yeah, yeah, boat company. Yeah, I think it's pretty much every single boat company that you can imagine, they come offer me as well. Yeah. So, and I was a 17 year old kid, barely able to speak English. I was like, I called my dad. This is so cool. Dad, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> they say they give you a boat. What do we do? Uh, but yeah, anyway. Um, that's kind of how I uh, get into Red Bull as well. So how did you choose all that, you know, board companies, boat companies, energy drink companies? What were your, 
you know, the factors that went into your decision? It was pretty easy for me. Um, whatever a future company and whatever it works best for me as of performance wise, then I choose those companies. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same story as what I'd say that I switched to company as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot of, uh, better, I guess, better, better contract, better money. Yeah. So what are we talking? What was, uh, what were the contracts? No. So like a couple of the, couple of the company were like, let's say the boat company, some of the boat company offers me, uh, two boats, one in Japan, one in America and the monthly payments and the bonus and blah, blah, blah. like damn. two boats. <laughs> That's pretty sick. Two boats <laughs> and a lot of money. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. A lot of money. How much are we talking? Uh, I don't know. You know, just a couple of yens. A couple of yens. Okay, <laughs> I see what we're doing here. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, that was my very first one too. So, I mean, it wasn't really huge, huge, but still for me, it's like even one boat. It, one boat. It's you have like, a boat, yeah. Damn, like it's just American dream. So, yeah. So, so when some of these relationships come to an end, because I think it's fascinating about athletes, yep. you're relying on your sponsors to... Mm -hmm support you financially right so when these relationships come to an end is that <clears throat> stressful in a sense of like when red bull i mean you didn't did you leave red bull or how'd that relationship kind so of end it's it's kind of a sad story because uh i was doing very well i think i took second or third overall series too i think that year and i was performing really well but red bull uh, Red Bull owner of Japan, like headquarter, changed from whoever guy came from Europe. I think like uh, the headquarter, and um, I think that his way of uh, the directing the company was more of like a uh, like Olympic ish thinking. Yeah, because especially that was a Tokyo twenty 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 twenty. Yeah, when they got whatever. postponed or whatever. Yeah, 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 postponed. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, then took uh, I think they took all a lot of uh, new skateboarder kid or snowboarding kid or a surfer or whatever. I I don't, I don't Olympic know. sport. Olympic sports. Yeah, yeah. And I told manager, I was like, I mean, it's company's decision, which is I agree. I mean, I understand, and I was very you know thankful to Rebel Japan to um, helps me what I do a lot. Yeah, I don't really never talk shit about the company that I left because. It's also, they, it's, it, they helped me a lot too. Yeah. And it was still 10, 11 years. Like that's, yeah, all, yeah. that's a long time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Helping, so. Exactly. But I was just kind of bummed because I was performance really well. And yeah. then it's not the, it's not anyone's fault. It's just a different direction. It's just the company's direction. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just like bummer. So when you are yeah. on Red Bull though, and they ship you Red Bull, mm -hmm. how much Red Bull are we talking? You're getting a lot of Red Bull to your doorstep every week, every month. Every, I think like two, three box every month. Okay. I think. And if you want sugar free, do they give you sugar free or is it yeah, all? Yeah, they give me whenever they, I want. Okay. Yeah, but I never drink. Because I saw you make some grapefruit Red Bull oh, yeah, drinks. Yeah, yeah. Those look pretty good. Yeah, yeah, no, that was very good. Pomegranate Red Bull. Yeah, drink. yeah, no, was, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I don't even just say it looks that. good. You know? I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, that was very, that was very tasty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then it, you're also not drinking the full Red Bull because a full Red Bull, I mean, that's, that's a lot of. I don't, yeah, I, stuff, I, I barely drink the Red Bull. Yeah. I was just giving away to a lot of friends. <laughs> the people who need the energy. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Too. yeah, yeah. So you do get Red Bull apparel, though. Do you have to ship the Red Bull hats back to Red Bull? What's the deal? Or you got to burn them? Like, what's the deal with that? Oh, the gear? Yeah. Oh, it's just still millions of them in somewhere. Oh, you, I, you, I you keep them? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they want me to ship it, I, I, I okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I, I, yeah, I don't care. I'm not going to wear it anymore. Yeah, I don't so. care. I should sell it. <laughs> So, um, but on a bigger, like a bigger point is, is it stressful though when you, you, cause you have to worry about who your sponsors are to keep living the lifestyle you're living. Is it stressful yeah. in a sense to, to make sure that you have enough sponsors to continue? Um, yeah, yeah, here, yeah, um, uh, yes and no. Cause, uh, very thankful and luckily that, um, I have a lot of sponsors in Japan too. And then all my sponsors in Japan, it's kind of more of like uh, helping me than actually like pushing me to be, have to be a top in the world. Yeah. I mean, when I was young, of course, they were like, we're going to try to support you and try to be the best. Like, come on, keep it up. But then 
it, I, it's been a long time I've been in the sports and in, in this scene. So um, it's more of them for me. It's like kind of like, okay, well, we just support you and just do whatever you want. Yeah. So you have sponsors from Japan and sponsors from America. Yep. Is it, mm. it's just so different to me because how much time do you spend in Japan? Like None. not much time at all. Probably like a month or month a year. So maybe? you're pretty much full time America. Yep. So how do you get these deals with Japanese companies when you're not there that much? You have an agent or uh, so how's that? that? That's what I'm saying. So uh, they've been sponsoring me since when I was like 17 or something. Okay. Yeah. Very young. It's been, it's, it, there's a lot, like most of my uh, Japanese sponsors probably around 10 years long um, relationship with them. And then um, especially my uh, wetsuits and life jacket company. Yeah. They've been sponsoring me since when I was like eight or nine maybe. Right away. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um that's the thing like even the wetsuits and life jacket company there's like a lot of big name that people know they offer me um when i was like very young and peak peak time but i didn't took the offer because um that was my that company was my very first um you stayed sponsor, with them st yeah very first uh sponsors that i made the deal with yeah yeah even no much money or they i don't know it's just it's just a thing for me yeah, they believed in you when yeah, as a kid. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So I think now is a good time to jump into another segment. It's called "Deserves Some Love," presented by Driftline. So Driftline makes wetsuit line board shorts okay. uh, that are perfect for the spring, fall season, or when the water's just not you know super warm. Um, it's got a you know they got a wetsuit liner in there that helps keep keep the guys warm down there. I've been rocking them. Um, if you guys are interested, check out the show notes for fifteen percent off. Use the code Grab fifteen at checkout. So deserve some love is who, you know, in throughout your wakeboarding career, do you think maybe didn't get the love or attention that they deserved? So it could have been a rider, could have been someone that you knew. So kind of like an underrated person or someone that, you know, didn't get the sponsors or the spotlight that maybe they should have. Um, I think, I don't know. That's a hard um, subject to be. Yeah. Because... Um. <laughs> so I'm a very good friend with the steel. Yeah. Um. I yeah. I mean, he, he I, we used to live together, and we were talking about a lot that man because we both love playing golf and all this stuff, and we watch a lot of sports at the same time. It's like we're just watching on TV. It's like, hey man, imagine if you started playing golf when you're like six, and then we're there and on TV and hit some balls, and we're probably like. Making a couple millions, easy, yeah, yeah. But we're sitting here now, and you know we're still lucky, lucky men, lucky boys. But it'll be a different story. Very different, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so um, it's not the. I, I think it's like wakeboarding. It's um, if if the wakeboarding has more people, I don't know how to explain it. It's like if if the wakeboard is more bigger, yeah. I think it's gonna help a lot, of, a lot of guys as well. To yeah, because yeah. the idea is like I feel very sad because, especially like Thomas Herman. Yeah. Come on, he learned the triple flip behind the boat, and he's sponsored by Supra. That's so sad for me. Why is that? Because it was on a Mastercraft, or because no, 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 he doesn't no. have a board sponsor. Well, anything. He should have had a twenty sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know a good name. Just, I think Thomas Herman's a good name. I think it's it's not just a name. I think it. I mean, I just put the Thomas's name because yeah, yeah. of it's easier to people understand. Sure. Yeah. Like the way that he trained and the way, like how much risk he took to land that triple flip. Come on, like it. It's not only Thomas, but it's just easier to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I think it's part of the generation too and um yeah it's it's hard I think. definitely definitely it's harder so yeah, yeah I, I i totally agree with what yeah. you're saying because the bigger the sport is the more people then more can people. make a living yeah. out of it and stuff yeah but. because wakeboarding costs a lot of money and then also i mean especially in japan though there's a lot of rich guys doing a wakeboard as well i'm sure the same is in america yeah. too like a lot of famous people rich people whatever um but 
hopefully um, more people, more money, and everything comes together in the wakeboarding and just the wakeboarding scene grow up. It'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Would you say in Japan, wakeboarding or wake surfing is more popular? Like, is wake surfing a thing that's uh, taken off there? Probably. Probably. I mean, I don't, I don't go there that much. But so you're only a month or two a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too American now. but <laughs> It's American, Shota. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about going big because I got a lot of questions. You know, going big uh, go on the wakeboard. Oh, okay, okay. Because you I, like I, to go, you like to go big mm. on the wakeboard. So yeah, I like to. I'm wondering if you've ever had any major knee injuries. Uh, not really. So I didn't think so because I yeah. feel like I've never seen you ride with a brace. Yeah, yeah. It seems like you haven't taken a lot of time off yeah, yeah. to a big. Injury. I do wear um brace though. You do. Yeah, I do. Okay. For like past two, maybe three years. You do. Okay. Yeah, but nothing major injured. Not like a. Super torn ACL no, no, no. or nothing yeah, for surgery. No, not at all. No surgery. So why do you think that is? Because you go huge. You go out to the flats. You're yep. boosting. Yeah. And I wouldn't say your legs are like massive, like <laughs> like Rusty Malinowski, like huge legs with right, muscle. Right, right, you know, right. So it's like, right, right. why do you think you haven't suffered any of these injuries that a lot of other wakeboarders have? I don't know. Just got lucky? Lucky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. It's... Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I was just wondering because you like, I mean, I'm looking at other riders. It's not as popular as it used to be going yeah. onto the flats, yeah. right? I mean, you still do it. So right, I was right. just curious. Yeah. And I'm also wondering, do you have the biggest backside 180 that isn't off a double up? Double up? That isn't off a double oh, up. Oh, so just a wake. Because uh, I was. I don't know. It's hard to say. I th I think it is. You know that video I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I know which one I'm talking about. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest one that I ever done in my life, too. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that backside 180 to the flats like probably like a million times. But I think that time and that specific one was the one of the biggest one. I like even I watched the video from now, I was like, damn, how do I didn't broke my leg? <laughs> like by myself too. I did twice that day. Cause that so Shane filmed that one. And um I think that was uh Watson was driving, I think. Okay. And then um I was trying to I was trying to do twelve in that day, I think. Frontside 1260? Front yeah, frontside 12. And I became pretty close. I just keep missing the hand, last handle pass. I spin around everything, but anyway. So um, I didn't have any clip to post on the Instagram. So I told Shane, uh, Shane I was like, hey, could you film uh, my back 780? I'm gonna try to do a bit to the flats. And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. So he filmed it, the first one. And he was like, and I, I landed it. I did the perfect one. I was like, hey, Shane, did you get that? I was like. Yeah, but do it again. I was like, do it again? Backs are already that big? One, another one? I was like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think I got it, but I think you went too big, so it's, it, might, it might be out of the frame. <laughs> you have to do it again. So the one that we filmed was the, uh, the, the I posted on Instagram. I think I posted both of them, but the one that you were talking about, it's probably the second one because that was way out frame. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, zoomed he, out. He filmed it zoomed in first one. And... um yeah, but I think, yeah, that was the biggest one I've ever done. It has to be one of the biggest ones ever done on a yeah. boat, just normal I, wake to wake. It's Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, Keith. You, you could be humble, but Keith, the thing was freaking huge. Dude. It was huge. Yeah, it was huge. But, you know, Keith and Dean and. Randall goes big. Goes Randall, too, yeah, yeah, everyone so. goes big. So yeah. um, it's hard to say it would be the biggest one, but that was the definitely the biggest one I've ever done. <clears throat> so if someone does want to go big behind the boat, you go big a lot. What would, some, what would some tips you have to riders that like to want to um, start going bigger? Don't be scared. You got to go send it. That's the tip. Yeah. If, you, if you're kind of scared, because if you're thinking about going up and down, that hurts. But if you go that way, that doesn't hurt that much. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, because I feel like on the cable, I don't know if you, I don't think you ride much cable these days at all. Yeah. Ever? When was the last time you rode cable? <laughs> Uh, been years probably like two years ago okay that's not as long ago. ago as i thought yeah but, but here's the thing though you know that odub has the pro pass they used to be the, yeah they don't i don't know it. if they have it now oh maybe they raised you up wouldn't know because you haven't been though yeah no 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 no, no. <laughs> here's the story okay so so they say oh yeah we got the pro pass and i think we, i i don't go by myself if somebody from japan or if somebody calls me is like hey let's go to odub i was like yeah, yeah, yeah sure i go there it, and I ask him. I always ask him, "Hey, is my pro pass still on?" He's like, "Yeah, you've been. You haven't been here in like a year and a half." He's like, "Okay, can I renew it?" And they're like, "Okay, yeah, sure." I do like probably like five laps. 
I get bored. I was like, okay. You dude. get no, you do not get bored. No way. I don't believe that. <laughs> yeah. There's no way. I, you so you're riding just awake and then you get bored when all these rails come into play? <laughs> no, it's fun, but I feel like the ODAB hasn't been changing the like Dude, you gotta go now. You gotta go now. They got a bunch of new rails. Yeah, that's a different story. Yeah, but I'm talking about this is like two, three years ago. That's fair. That's fair. It's just some kickers and and some flat bars. Every year, I probably pay like 100 bucks or something for the whole year pass. Yeah, and I do like five, six laps, and then let's go. Yeah, I'm okay with it. And then I just stop, start, stop riding. So. Um, I think we. I think you got to get back out on the okay, cable. Okay, okay. They have rails. Now. Like, okay, yeah. You got to get back. <laughs> but on hey, the cable. hey, when I get back on the when I get back on the cable though, I'm like, damn, cable is so cool. I'm, and you got to be. Used I'm a cable to it ride, I'm a cable rider. That's well, what I always say. That I saw some videos of you at Phuket <laughs> Wake no, no, Park. Don't get me wrong. I love cable. I love cable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just get bored pretty easy. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a mindset thing. I think I, I think I could go with you to the cable and you wouldn't get bored. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. All right. So. I don't even know where I was talking. Oh, I was talking about how on the cable, like they have an XL kicker or just a large kicker and the XL boots yep. you high yep. and then lands. Right. But the large you can kind of send out. Right. So you have more forward momentum. It hurts less. Right. So that's kind of what you're saying. If you're going to go exactly. big on the boat, same exactly. thing. Exactly. You need it. Like you need a side, side to side as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that back one, I landed it. It looked like I broke my leg, but I also went so far away on like it's probably if you if you if you see my rope tension, it's almost like full other side. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If yeah. I land in the trough, I'll probably that like hurts. the board not gonna go, you know, flow like right away as well. And it hurts. I yeah. probably broke today. But yeah. But yeah, I mean you're past the bubbles, you're way out yeah, there, exactly. which is ideal. Yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah. yeah, and I feel like when you, you watch you gotta, Randall yeah, you gotta do that. and stuff, they're going so far out, it's right. taking a lot of that. Right. Impact out at least yeah. a little bit. So um, I got another Patreon question from Josh Dahlheimer. Okay. And he's wondering, so Rusty and Steel did that big air contest. Big air. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Do you think they should run that back and bring you into the mix? So so during that, though, I forget what I was. I was with someone. And I was actually watching on my phone that they were uh, doing live streaming. Yeah. And... Uh, I didn't say anything about it. I didn't even comment on it at the beginning. And there's so many people comment on my name and hashtag me whole time. It's like, you guys are scared. Why don't you bring Shota to me in that tournament contest, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I mean, I don't know. At that, at that time, I was like, I feel, um, I was ready yeah. to get into that contest as well. Your invite must have got lost in the mail or something. You know, <laughs> it just it had to be. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, I was kind of enjoying the third party too, watching yeah, that watch, contest. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I, I think they should run it back though with you three. Because yeah. you're on three different boat companies. So right. that'd be pretty cool. Right. I don't know why that'd be cool, but it'd be, yeah, it'd but be also, different. Yeah, but also you got to think about that we were like probably 10 plus years after last time. Take an Advil. Time. You'll be all right. I mean, come on now. You'll be all right. <laughs> so... I want to talk about this season because this yeah. season there's only been, you know, one, I think, major boat contest so far, and that's yeah. Moomba. Yeah. And we were talking about before the podcast, yeah. you decided not to go this year. Yeah. So what was, I guess, the decision between between not going and going? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I was just, I wasn't really ready that point as well. I wasn't really, I wasn't riding much crazy because especially last year, I had a great season um, for the contest wise and. Um, social media, all the stuff. I had a really enjoyed the season and I had a great result coming out last year. So it's more of like a kind of taking it easy in this winter season, play golf a lot. Um, but anyway, it's yeah, just kind of taking it easy and yeah. started to get back for my uh, body shape and then the wakeboarding shape back um, slowly. And um, yeah, I think Mumbo is just a bit early. And also, we have uh, two contests in Australia as well this year. So at the end of the, at the September, end of the year. Yeah, yeah, September. So I'm so. Try, I think I'm I'm going for the worlds. Okay. Um, in Australia, so I, was, I just took pass for that tournament. <clears throat> so the rest of the season, though, yeah. are you? What are your plans? Are you gonna go to um, PWT? I mean, yeah. So it's video it's part? kind of funny story because uh, last year I turned thirty, and uh, I think past two maybe three years I've been the oldest guy on the tour, and um, last year I was. 30 and that was before i think when i was like 23 24 right around there 
a lot of people ask me, it's like, hey, what do you do after wakeboarding? How long are you going to be competing to? And I was like, hmm, I don't know. Probably competing to 30 at least. And after that, we'll figure out. And turned 30 last year, and I had a great season. And I was like, damn, like, I feel, I feel like enjoying what to do, like what I'm doing right now, like being com- competing still and uh, trying to be healthy and uh, wakeboard as much as possible. And um, I feel like I'm still be able to do it into the time I, bo- I won't be able to compete. It. So I think I'm trying to compete or do what I wanted to do and what I like to do as much as possible. So you still like going to the, the contest? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I love, it, so. I love competing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, getting motivation with the, from the, all the young kids and uh, yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Showing them how it's done, right? I mean, I mean, yeah. sometimes, sometimes <laughs> works. Show them how the backside 180 is done. <laughs> so would you ever film another video part? I like to. See, a lot of people say that. Yeah. But in the plans at all, I mean, you got, you got any clips that you've no. filmed? No. All right. I post a lot. Well, you can save the good ones. Put the put the trash on social media. No one cares anyway. What they, you know, they're gonna scroll scroll by anyway. So put the no, no, no. They watch mine for a million times. What about the twelve no, sixty? What about the twelve sixty? When are we gonna see that? Twelve. Yeah, twelve sixty. You said you were close, right? I was. Yeah. Uh, when was the last time you tried one? It's been a long time. I think you got it. You go big enough. You spin fast enough. Yeah. Just a matter of time, right? You don't seem that interested in the <laughs> 60 anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. You don't know. I feel like you got enough air for 14. You could just go straight to 14. Yeah, just skip one. Skip, just go straight to 14. Yeah, probably. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, then we're good. <laughs> no, so the thing is, though, um, so past couple of years, like past like two, three years, <clears throat> I've been actually enjoying to do some uh, some weird stuff. Like, like that Japan uh, roll blind that I do from the hillside. That's not the very, very like, uh, like a technical as or harder as like 12, 14, uh, double mobs and blah, blah, blah. When I was young, I was like, oh, I was thinking about it. It's like hill 10, toe 10, uh, double cab, uh, double back row, double back row to fakie or whatever, like the flip spin crazy yeah. stuff ramp it up yeah exactly but now on i think past two three years being that i've been really enjoyed it is that um that more of like uh some weird trick i would say yeah like not the a lot of people does it and um i enjoy by myself to doing that and also hopefully a lot of people enjoy watching that as well definitely i feel like the unique stuff is what a lot of people like to yeah. see so but also it's 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 hard to balance because I still competing. So you still have to do the exactly. Yeah. That's, I mean, like, I think I feel like that's why I'm still doing, um, I'm trying to learn all those mob fives and mob sevens and still do tens and stuff. Yeah. Just because of that. I don't really enjoy as much as when I was young Yeah. to doing all those crazy tricks. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I get that. Yeah. I mean, you got heel nine on lock though. Yeah. So heel 12 is just another 360. Yeah, I guess. So, but, yeah. Yeah. I'm just really trying to plant the seed <laughs> of the 1260. Just <laughs> it's okay. So there's a lot of young kids that doesn't a lot of spin. So. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. They're whipping around. Yeah, so yeah. what's your favorite contest format? You know, because the PWTs messed around with some different formats. And I'm curious if you have a favorite uh, style. Favorite. Or least favorite. I mean, it could be both. X game was fun. Very fun. The video one or the throwdown? Uh, throwdown. Throwdown. I thought that was cool too. That was that was very fun and I loved it. Uh, format, um, head to head. Uh, I think it was only one pus for. It was just tri- down. I think it's yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. Like only one down and uh, head to head. That was very fun. Um, so at that point, last year Pro Tour, I think it was second stop, maybe third stop, that we did uh, head to head. That was very fun as well. But there's, I mean, yeah. Uh, Bish was just really hurting his head last year because it was a very hard decision a lot to make, especially me and Nick's head-to-head. That's what I heard, yeah. That was, yeah, that was uh, hectic. I heard it was, I mean, yes, it was a hard decision to make, but that the format didn't make it 
No, it makes sense. It made sense, is what I'm saying. It makes sense. Yeah. I agreed with it too. Not because of I was the one writing. Yeah. I think I was judging. I will probably Say still the put the same decision to it. But because of that, it is very hard still because the four tricks versus one trick. The way formats make sense is that I think I probably went through, but still Nick did a way harder trick than I did one trick. Yeah. Yeah. Like for putting four, like putting trick to trick, it's one of the hardest thing. Like saying snowboarding big air versus uh, slope style. Slope style. Yeah. Slope is way harder. I, I, I wouldn't say way harder because I'm not, I'm not, you know. But you have to do several things in a yeah, row exactly. and land them all yeah. rather especially, than Yeah, one. especially uh, big, big air. You have a lot of attempts too. True. Yeah, slope style. I mean, you have three attempts or two or three attempts. Sometimes two, yeah. Sometimes two. And also if you messed up one reel, you're done. So yeah, um, yeah it's very hard decision. But you like head to head format. Head to head is lot. very fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fun to watch too. It's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. It's easy to it's watch. One of the, it's one of the, my favorite part about the, uh, the Pro Tour head-to-head uh, -head format. It's because of there's so many tricks that um, we don't see it often in the contest was in there. Yeah. Like that Kai did Hill 10. Come on. Like, that's insane. It is insane. Yeah. He was he was head-to-head -head with me too. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, that was great. I mean, I still had a chance to beat him, but it's more of like, I was very happy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was super happy to see him landing that. And also I was very happy to, Hill 10 was in the contest. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's winning. True. Yeah. Big fan of that. So yeah. let's talk boat setup. So you are, let's talk board size, rope flank, yep. speed, stance, all that stuff. What are you, what are you riding? Um, uh, I ride... I think I read 75 um, for the ropes and then um, 137, I believe, my board. No, 136. It's tiny. Tiny. Guess how, guess how big my board is for the cable. Know, 56. It's 58, yeah. 58. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You should try that on the, bo on the boat sometime. I read that. No, no, I enjoy it. I enjoy the big board too. Yeah, yeah. I also and very enjoy. We have uh, we got the sob Sean O'Brien's uh, board. Yeah, yeah, his board is very flexible. I really enjoyed it. When I when I signed with O'Brien, first time, I tested all the board, and I called Sean. I'm I'm very close with Sean too, and I was like, Hey Sean, I really love this board. And that board got so much pop too, but I told him I can't ride this board on the contest. It's fun, but it's, it's not very fun. Yeah, yeah. It's very I enjoy, but I just can't do it because the way that moves, it's super flow, you know, like a chill board. It's very fun. I can do every trick probably, but I just can't do it in like, like contests. Yeah, things. definitely. You need something stiff and aggressive. Yeah, kinda. exactly. So, so what, what kind of uh, stance? Yeah, 36 stance angle? and uh, I'm all the way out. And I think it's 2020. Okay, so pretty. Very ducked Very out. ducked, yeah. Yeah. Tw 50. Yeah, I don't remember. It's the same. Maybe though? fifteen, fifteen. Fifteen, okay. Yeah, 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 same thing. But yeah, very ducked. Yeah. And then what's the boat speed? Did you say twenty-two five six? Twenty-two six, okay. Yeah. At seventy-five feet. Usually, about. yeah. Okay. Mm. So I got a, uh, I got a couple questions from Steel. Ooh. He wanted to know when you were going to land the twelve, but we were we kind of covered that <laughs> within the next year or so. You're probably going to crack the twelve. Um, who is little okay. Larry? Huh? Who is little Larry? Oh. This is such a good story. I'm like, so before we get into that, okay? I I used to live with Harley, and I pick up a lot of, a lot of uh, Australian accent too. And uh, by the time that was like Brett Tunison, Corey Tunison, Parker, like all those, he was living that house as well. And I moved to Steels, and then um, whenever the when all my friends. Kind of, kind of making fun of my English here and there. They're all friends. They're all you know laughed about it, which is very fun because I don't care. I, I will literally say it's like, "Hello." <laughs> I'm that kind of person. Like <laughs> I would say, "Hello, how 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 are you?" You know what I mean? Like saying that, I was just yeah. messing around. But then 
that first se- 17, uh, my first ever junior podium, I don't even know what to say. I don't even, sp- I don't even, I don't even know how to speak, right? And Steve was like, okay, I'll write it down for you. And the podium, I was like, I'm super pum- pumped at it. Thank you to family and sponsors. That was probably the thing. And I was like, I think I, I won the double up contest too and the junior. So I, I have to speak twice. And the first, I think the second one, I would say like, this is too much, no English. And go, bah, like the crowd goes like crazy, which is, it was pretty cool. But anyway, so they all give me all this hard thing to say. And he was like, hey, could you, could you say little Larry? I was like, what? R- R- Riddle Larry? Riddle Larry? It's like, <laughs> that was the thing. We, they were, they were just dying. Like they were just, just like, loving it. they just loved it. They were just like, they just could they literally just couldn't like, couldn't take a breath. <laughs> um, I was like, took me probably two years to say it. Little Larry. Little Larry. That is a tongue twister. Yeah, but also, yeah, but also I was like, I don't know what, it, what they were saying. Is it like, is it the thing? Or is it the song? Or is it like the word? I was like, what, what are you guys talking about? Is it, is it like a word or the thing? And they're like, no, 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 it's Little Larry. I was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> and after, after like a year and a half or so, it's like, we were talking about like little, like the little girl. And her name is, um, yeah, like that. Exactly, exactly that. I was like, ah, oh, okay, I get it. It took me two years. Well, you got it now, little Larry, locked yeah, in. Um, he's yeah. also wondering how much time you spend on the karaoke app on your phone. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was doing that a lot. You still do, or just used to? Uh, not really anymore. What is the karaoke app? You got music. So during the COVID, during the COVID, I was like so bored. I, I I was like I don't know what to do, and this this. Uh, Oh, one of my uh, one of my friends, Mizuki, he was he lives in America, and I went to dinner with him, and he was like, "Hey, do you know this app that has uh, karaoke?" And that was the app that I like my, when I was like a junior high school or something that that was like trend app in Japan when I was a super young, and I was like, "Oh, I remember the app," but I didn't know that they had a karaoke. I was like, I tried to download it. And I downloaded that app and then I tried to like, you know, using the karaoke thing, blah, 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 on the phone. And I started kind of getting into it. And then all the, like, yeah, that's kind of, I was just bored. Just a big fan. You <laughs> yeah, like it. Yeah, it's fun. So speaking of <clears throat> rapping and music. Yeah. Do you ever. Uh, you don't want to talk about it? Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> we can cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I read some articles. I was like, yeah, so, oh, this might no, be no. So one. here's the thing, though. So I can speak about it, but for, for yeah, yeah, we're probably moving on. Speak, yeah, we're probably moved on. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's not only me. So so okay, yeah. back to wakeboarding. <clears throat> okay, what do you think about wakeboards that have camber? Uh, unique. That's a one word for it. Yeah, unique. Yeah, and uh, something interesting. Something different. Yeah, something different. Yeah, I liked it. You did? I never, ro- I never rode one. Mm. I just thought it'd feel slow. Is there, is there still camper board? I yeah. don't think they make them anymore. No. Okay, I good. Because so. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the reason why I say good because the camper board it's such a poppy board. Like it goes huge. Like a three stage aggressive. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a lot of flow. Um, brings up a lot. But also, it's very technical board. I don't think there's not many people be able to use that board mm-hmm. as of like. So I wouldn't really. It's it's not really recommending board of like. Just a few people. Hey, could. if you want to go up, use this. It's it's very hard. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I've never ridden one. I've always I've always been if, been curious. If, if there's a yeah, if the, if the people is a pro, they'd be able to get used to it and they'd be able to use it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just so inconsistent. Yeah, that's why. Um, for the amateur guys or whoever not like uh, has an, a lot of border control with it. See, I'm not that I'm not the means that I have a lot of technique. I love easy board. Like 
even my board that I'm riding right now, I was using the, it's called the Bahala. Uh, it's called the Bahala. Like, it's probably like the basic line of O'Brien has. That board is such a great board and it's very cheap. It's probably, I, I don't know, I don't even know how much it is. It's probably like 200 bucks or something for board, but it's such a great board. It's so easy. And I don't think no one can not riding that board. That's yeah, how a good time. It, yeah, that's how easy that board is. So I like, I'm a fan of uh, easy board. Um, to be like anyone can do it. Yeah. No stress. Huge that's fan that, of that that's too. a word. Yeah, that's a good word to say. No like, stress. No stress. Yeah. yeah. Get up easy, yeah. ride around. Like technical, like high end board. Of course, it's good. Like they use a good material, expensive board, look fancy. Um, but sometimes it's too technical. Yeah. For the for the amateur guys. So. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I got another one from Steel. He's wondering how much. Man, he's really interested. Well, about he, man, he, he threw off a bunch. He was like, <laughs> "Okay, this is the last. Uh, this is the last one okay, from Steel." Okay. But okay. Uh, he was wondering how much sake did you guys drink at a WWA event with your whole family and oh, friend group in Japan? Man. That was that was crazy. My friends still talking about that. So, uh, we had a contest in Japan, Tokyo, and uh, I had a big uh, big team came out. My family sponsors, friends, um, a lot of people came out cheer for me, and then uh, I I probably knocked out in semis, and uh, and that night um, I was also filming one of the rebel rebel episode. As well for the whole series, a year, year, whole year series thing, and um, so Spencer Norris was uh, filming me whole time, whole year, and then uh, me, Spencer, and Steel, we all went to dinner with my family, friends, all the team, and then uh, we went to sushi restaurant, and then I already knocked out in the semi, so I was pissed, I was so bad, so I drink, I like hell out of it, like crazy, sake. <laughs> like sake, and that that restaurant, all you can drink too. Like next, that's a thing. That's the thing. Sushi restaurant, all you can drink. I don't know. I think it was a package thing. I think. Yeah. I don't remember. I was too drunk. But anyway, all you can drink. We we drink whole sake they had in the restaurant. Everything they had. Everything they had. Like only sake, not the other liquor. Yeah. yeah. Sake. Yeah. Yeah. And I broke their paddle. <laughs> what? I, I broke their paddle. Like you know, like the. They have they I think the sushi restaurant has like the panel of their restaurant panel. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. In the front of the front yeah. of the restaurant. You broke it. Yeah, I I I yeah. I get in the and I get in the cab and my friends like, hey, where's your shoe? I came with the I came with the foot uh barefoot. <laughs> I, I forgot even I forgot You even. were really drunk then. I was <laughs> very <laughs> drunk. But also I was super mad about it too. Yeah, yeah so, sure, sure. Yeah. So was was Steel there? Or was it just yeah? yeah Steel oh, was there. He, was, he was he was very drunk too. Yeah, yeah. But he rode well. The next day. Next day, oh. I think he did a double. That was the, probably the first ever double in the contest. Off to wake. I wouldn't know. Oh no no maybe maybe not maybe first Steel. First for Steel. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah, well, maybe that's a good luck charm. Yeah, Drink some yeah, sake yeah. before <laughs> some sushi. You yeah, know, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Um, let's kind of talk talk the future a little bit. So, who are some up and comers from Japan that you know we should keep our eye on, or, or some names from Japan that are ripping? Um, yeah, there's a there's a couple. I mean, there's a lot of good writers down there. Even though I don't watch, like I watch on Instagram sometimes and uh, watch. Those, like, who is this kid? There's a lot of like stylish, good talent kid down there. Um, especially uh, Hinata. She's uh she writes for uh. She came with the project last year, and then this is her. This is gonna be her second year of, of uh, pro, and I'm competing whole season in America. So, um, I'm very exciting for her to be um, became, I don't know, like pushing kid. Yeah. That bring all the good vibes in Japan, and uh, hopefully, there's a lot of bunch of other good kids come over and compete in here. Yeah, sick. So yeah. she's she's a big name coming up. Yeah. Um, got another <laughs> last last Patreon question before we wrap this up from okay. Cole Van Hoff. He's wondering, and you might have already answered this, but do you golf or wakeboard more these days? Last year, wakeboard. This year? Well, I just started it. 2024? 2024. It's what, March? March. Um, golf. But that's because of winter season. My winter season is my golf season, so I don't golf much. Take some time off. Yeah. I don't I don't go much in the summer. Yeah, well, it's too hot. 
Yeah, yeah, it's too, too hot. hot. Yeah. What's your? Uh, we were talking before, but what's your? You don't have an official handicap, but like, what's your? My official handicap is probably five. It's a five. Yeah, the thing that I posted it. Yeah. Okay. But also, so sometimes I go out there and shoot like seventy, uh, seventy, like one over, two over, or something like that. And for eighteen. For eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you said seventy something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then a lot of people is like, score that in uh, what's the thing? Uh, call uh, uh whatever the the, the official. Yeah, the official app. Yeah. I was like, you know, too lazy. And like, post that because otherwise you're not gonna like. It's not gonna be just, accurate. Yeah, you, yeah, it's not gonna be accurate. And then you just go out there and play for the, um, you know, like a, a bidding game with the friends, and that you you just sandbagging. I was gonna say that's called sandbagging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I will tell you the truth. And also, I don't play every day, so sometime one over, sometime I don't know, twenty over. <laughs> See, that's accurate. So, Speaking of steel, we were talking about him. He golfs a lot. I th- he definitely golfs more than he wakeboards. Has to. Yeah, yeah. He he, oh, yeah. he does. So well, he's been busy lately. So could you beat him straight up in golf? Hard to say. What if you gave him a lot of sake beforehand? That's would that help or hurt? That's not gonna. That's not. That's gonna not change gonna change. It. It. <laughs> that's not gonna change. It. <laughs> that's gonna be the same thing. <laughs> uh, uh, yes and no. Yeah, because I've seen so past two years. Not this year, but last year and the year before, um, he was competing uh, uh, some of the golf tournament, and um, he was playing for the uh, celebrity division for that. And then he calls me, he's like, "Hey, could you caddy me?" So I caddy for him for the tournament. And I mean, we've been known since we we're like this kid. So um, he hit some good, great shot, but he's also goes crazy too. So. Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> depends on the day. Yeah, it depends on the day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair he can enough. smoke me very good, but also I can beat him too. Okay. So here and there. Fair and enough. Saki, we're just going to get, we just, we're both, both going to get. Both get worse. Yeah, we're just both going to get like super happy. <laughs> super happy. Such a great day. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's just throw the club and go to the bar. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. All right. So I think wrapping this up, um, before we wrap this up, is there anyone you want to thank or anything we should <laughs> We should touch on that we didn't talk about. Um, no, I think pretty much I talked everything that I wanted it, and um, I'm just very thankful to everyone for. Um, I mean, obviously watching this invite. Yeah, thanks for invite, and then um, um, hopefully I don't know everything wakeboarding scene just going better and better. Um, because uh, especially the guy that I like, like for me, like I like competing. I'm a competing guy, so um. Contest scene's been going down a little bit, I think, and uh, but still, you know, Bish and everyone trying to help in. I mean, obviously, Supra is still sponsoring for the Pro Tour, and um, I think whoever is trying to help and keep it up for the Pro Tour, whatever the contest scene, hope hope a lot of people started watching, get back into the contest scene because I I really enjoyed it. Um, going the uh, the wake open or weight games so whenever that like super big cloud contest and um there's not much people coming out this uh, those years like you know people watch a lot of internet or watching a live streaming which is also cool too but um hopefully um that kind of scene comes back and um yeah I just wore, yeah i just i'm just happy to be what i do right now so yeah definitely thankful it's it's awesome for sure so yeah i want to say thank you to come for coming on it's been it's been a great chat loved yeah. uh sitting down with you Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you guys are, you know, big fan of the podcast, support the Patreon. That's the best way to support the podcast. Um, and yeah, rate that five stars on uh, Apple and uh, Spotify if you guys are you. digging the podcast. So thanks everyone for tuning in. See you guys next time. What's Arigato? Thank you. <laughs>